Hello everyone, Nick again. I wanted to do a part two video about my COVID experience and kind of correlate it a little bit more to sensory or somatic OCD, which is my main fear, or really my only fear. And then how I kind of, my anger took over and how I started to treat, you know, my wife again and stuff like that. So it really was a, make sure this truck is not coming down this street. So it really ended up being a, a very hard time for my wife as well. So as OCD sufferers, when we have relapses and setbacks, we tend to be very kind of shut off to the rest of the world or we don't really take advice well, uh, rightfully so. We can be really suffering with chronic anxiety and extreme amounts of intrusive thoughts. So we can just say, you know, just leave me alone. I don't want to listen. Nobody understands. And, and I understand why you're doing that, but we kind of have to look beneath that and try to be receptive to people's advice that they're just trying to help us, they care about us. So what happened was I was getting very, very angry with Erica and I was being really, really mean to her. Um, this is not something I'm the most proud of and I've, I have been like this on and off for the majority of my life, not just with my wife, but with my, with my friends when I was really irrational about, what the heck are you talking about? I'm right, you're wrong or with my family and so forth. So I really ended up being pretty rough on Erica on this setback. This was my worst setback in my recovery journey so far. And you know, I would scream at her and uh, Rob and I had the one-to-one -one and he said, you know, he said to me like, man, you, you gotta chill out. You know, your wife is trying to help you. And, and you know, he understands that when you're going through in a really bad extreme process like this, you know, it's it could be very, very difficult and so forth. But, you know, the reality is we have to s step back and look at, you know, these people are just trying to help us. Now, when I was stuck in the ER, I want to, like I said, I want to correlate this back to somatic, my somatic OCD, you know, what was, what was going on? So as I have said, you know, a lot, I have somatic OCD swallowing and salivation. It's mainly salivation. Uh, swallowing has started up three or four months ago, but that doesn't really matter because it's all just the fear of being stuck forever for a majority of somatic OCD people. That's our main fear. Uh, the internal checking is our probably our main compulsion which and avoidance behavior. So anyway, you know, I started, like I said in my last video, I started to really become aware of my heartbeat. I started to really become aware of my breathing. I became aware of my blinking, you know, like I was like, what the heck is going on? While on top of having pneumonia, while on top of not being able to breathe and on oxygen. So it was just this really bad time for me in my OCD recovery journey. And I, the, you know, these are the typical thoughts that were going through my head, you know, okay, you know, should I tell the doctor that I have OCD? Does the doctor even understand OCD? Does that even matter? Um, is it my symptoms that are really bad? Is my anxiety actually affecting the reason why I can't breathe? Or is it actually my somatic OCD and really trying to internally gauge each sensation and why I was noticing them and, and saying to myself, you know, this isn't, this isn't normal. I, I, I know, I know what I'm, I know the recovery process. And this is actually really important to cover because a lot of people think that when you start recovering, everything seems to be just, you know, la la land and we all go in this linear fashion when it's as i've said it's you know it's not like this it's not like this it's like that you know you could have moments a year into your recovery journey where you feel like you're back at square one but square one doesn't exist and so forth so this was really a time for me where i said to myself wow i'm back at square one i'm super hyper aware i know this every single sensation in my body um and it's it's not just salivation swallowing anymore so i'm i'm stuck i'm, I'm doomed and uh, I really was telling my wife, you know, like, this is it for me. I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to die. And I really was in the worst mental headspace I've been since before I found OCD recovery or any type of recovery tools at all. And this really was the most counterproductive thing for me because uh, not only am I, am I in a place in my journey where I'm not really disputing at all because I've done enough readings, I understand it's more about getting comfortable with the sensations and letting them be more, you know, just present and not trying to avoid them. But in all in all, when I had COVID, because you're extremely sick and because you have all these other pathological symptoms, such as shortness of breath, such as fever, like I said, I had 104 fever, 102.9 to 103.1 was like my average for like four days. You know, your OCD is gonna latch to that. 
that's going to happen if you're going through recovery. You know, for someone like Rob or someone who's been recovered for 13 years, they're the chances of that sticking are almost slim to none, more on the none side, because you're so far into your recovery journey slash recovery that those those things don't latch anymore. But when you have these major setbacks, which all of us will have, I'm speaking to every single person who's watching this video, you will have multiple setbacks and that is completely okay. The way we react to those setbacks is a huge determining factor on how you push through recovery. So remember if you watched my last video, I was saying that, you know, five days into being really sick, I just said to myself, get out of bed and start moving, no matter how uncomfortable it feels. Because if you don't do this, you're gonna get down to a place where you think in your mind where you're not gonna be able to get any better. So this was really, really a tough thing. And having sensory motor and since COVID has a lot of physical symptoms, this is why your brain will say to you, is it COVID? Is it my sensory? Is it my somatic OCD? How do I, am I gonna get better from this? And your mind just starts going in all these different ways. And the reality is you have to just let that happen. As uncomfortable as this, I've said this a few times in the video, the farther you get along in recovery, you realize the majority of your day is actually not disputing irrational beliefs. Once you learn how to dispute, and once you learn how to see things rationally, you practice that in everyday situations, the majority of your day, especially for a somatic OCD sufferer, is just letting those sensations be there, letting those intrusive thoughts come. I'm, I'm very fortunate. I don't really have a lot of intrusive thoughts at all. I'm just, I'm very physically sensational based. You know, like I feel everything. Hyper awareness is my main thing. So like I said, my thought was I'm stuck for hitting the, the table here. I'm stuck forever and I'm not gonna be able to, to get better. So, the, you know, the reason why I'm very passionate about making these videos is because, as I said in my last video, the community that we have is extremely important. You know, the moderators and people who may not be moderators who are just further along in their recovery journey or people who have completely recovered and they just wanna live their life, you know, there's a lot of people out there that want to help you and there's going to be a lot of distractions. There's going to be a lot of negative people. There's going to be a lot of naysayers because this is something new. When something is new, OCD recovery is very, 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 very new. You're going to have a lot of people, whether they're laymen, whether they're uh, researchers, whether they're psychiatrists or psychologists or PhDs, that they're going to be naysayers. And, and that is always going to happen anywhere, anytime that someone is looking for success, or on the path of success, you will have haters, doubters, whatever you wanna call them. And that is part of life, and that is a huge realization of the fear of doing things correctly, and then also entangled in all of this is the fear of losing control. The fear of losing control is something I didn't think I had until I started like freaking out, you know, am I doing this right, am I doing that right, am I doing this right? And this really was a de detrimental factor you might be doing something wrong. And you can realize that a year down the road and that's completely okay, but that's a learning process. So, you know, back to what I was saying, you know, when you're going through something like COVID, you know, if you get COVID or so and so forth, uh, or any type of other comorbidity or disease or anything, is going along that journey with your OCD journey and not trying to nitpick like, is it this or is it that? And it's going to happen naturally, especially if you if you haven't even begun uh, the recovery process yet, you know, the readings and stuff like that, which are so vital. I know we say that all the time, but please read the reading list and so forth and watch the YouTube videos in a balanced way. Um, and you won't recover overnight. That's one thing I've realized about somatic OCD. Somatic OCD has its own unique aspects to it. And something unique about OCD is that you will not recover right away. So, and that is okay. Yeah, most of the people I've talked to, it's taken a very long time for them to become completely habituated and getting underneath their fears for somatic OCD. That's why I'm relating this more to somatic OCD. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I think it's really important to talk about the summary real quick. You know, uh, I get when you're suffering, like for me, COVID, I got really angry with my wife, I'm trying to sit back and think, okay, my wife is just trying to help me. But these people are just trying to help me. Uh, you know, get out of, you know, try to just let them do that, even if you don't agree with them, you know? And then, you know, trying to internalize, is this my OCD? Is it my somatic OCD? Is my symptoms from COVID? And just 
not trying to figure it out because we all know if you follow this channel that trying to desperately figure something out is not the way out of OCD. It's the way in more suffering. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. Please subscribe down below if you want to listen to more videos of any of the people talk. There's lots of great information on this channel. A lot of people talking about their experiences. Some people are more or better versed in different fears. You know, I've never had POCD, harm OCD, contamination OCD, uh, any of that stuff. Mine's all sensory and somatic based. So thank you so much for listening again. I hope you guys have a terrific day.